Hey everyone, this is Dibya Sahu here and today I am going to talk about few email best practices which is probably responsible for 50% of your email deliverability problems. Whether you are a starter or a pro who is probably sending millions and billions of emails, these fundamental email best practices are essential for everyone who wants to send emails at scale. In the next 20 minutes, I will be talking about 10 email best practices that you should bookmark and start implementing religiously to see results in the long run. So coming to the next slide, uh, I hope you all can see my screen clearly. So what I'm going to cover today is no buzzwords, no theories, only actionable tips with live examples which can help you get better deliverability. So feel free to ping me with your questions and I will try to answer all those in the comment section below. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and I will be happy to help you. So you can ask any questions below in the comment section and keep watching the description below. So the video description which is there below in the YouTube so just watch that description section also because I have shared some helpful links there which can be uh, uh, helpful for you to get a better deliverability and help you to prepare for your email marketing campaigns. So before jumping into those 10 email best practices, I want to talk about problems that exactly starts popping in when someone really in the phase of scaling their email marketing pro programs. So coming to the first problem, yes, as you can rightly see on the screen, it's spoofing and phishing. As you start gaining popularity in the market, you will be in the eyes of bad actors. On the screen, you can see some of the phishing email examples, which looks to be coming from PayPal and some from Bitcoin communities, but they are really not coming from those places. You might have heard or being a victim of such a phishing email from a bank or a payment gateway or a crypto communities. So in most of these hacks, the hackers spoof the brand identity to run the show. So hackers, what they do is they embed URLs that look similar to the actual brand URL and sometimes even uses the same sender as the brand to send emails to. So the second problem uh, when you grow big is you start losing control on your email sending frequency. There, are, there will be multiple departments in your organization all working towards achieving their targets by upselling or cross-selling products to your customer base. So here is a live example of an email that I receive daily. So you can see on the screen uh, the email which I am receiving daily from a leading bank in India. And you can see the number of emails which I am getting on the same day. So sending too much can really impact your deliverability and engagement rate also. So sometimes it can really, really badly impact your deliverability also. So be cautious about that. So the third problem, which again arises because of the second problem, that is the frequency problem, which I just mentioned is, so the third problem is listing. Because you are sending two haphazard and sometimes on a mixed databases like opt-in and non-opt-in, your domain and IP address will start getting listed on global block list databases like spam house. Now I will take you through some of the email best practices, which you can, uh, which, which can really help you come out of these problems. So not only that, but it will also help you build a positive sender reputation with global mailbox providers like Gmail, Yahoo and Outlook. So the first best practice is to start tagging your email streams and measure the performance of each of your tags. 
so here on the screen you can see a example of what i meant by tagging and how to measure each of these tags you can see not all your emails might be uh, performing uh, equally well so let me try to highlight uh, some of the emails yeah so i can see the pointer now so see uh, there there is one email which is like transactional category so it's a payment confirmation email so you can see here the open rate is very good that is 67% open is there while the other emails like some outstanding emi uh, email is there so it is like encouraging the users to convert their payment into emis so that's a marketing email so there the open rate is 7% so based upon the stream of emails the open rate click rates bounce rate all these varies based upon what email you are sending and especially to which database also so that is why i said it is very important to start tagging your email streams and then measure what is happening behind so this is my first recommendation that is to start tagging each of your emails based on its importance and the business use case the second best practice is to have different sending domain for each of your email streams so here you can see on the screen again uh, there are different sub domains of the same primary domain for different category of emails so except for corporate one on one communication avoid using primary domain for sending email always use a sub domain of the same primary domain to send emails so many of us start uh, buying multiple domains to send uh, different type of emails so which is really not a good email practice so this impacts user trust and sometimes makes your email look phishing too for example if you are sending from a uh bank xyz.com try to always send the email from xyz.com instead of creating new new domains like xyzmail.com xyzcommunication.com xyzalerts.com don't try to create these type of new domains so these type of new domains might look fishy to your end user so here is the rule of thumb for choosing the sender domain please note one thing here that each domain carries its own reputation but don't forget there is a cascading effect too so don't to, uh, like doing too much uh, bad at a sub domain level so say uh, there is a sub domain support.domain.com or connect.domain.com if you are doing something really bad at the sub domain level then it can impact the overall primary domain reputation too so primary domain here is domain.com so it can impact the overall reputation of domain.com also one more thing avoid using no reply email addresses encourage people to reply because that is where the real engagement will happen with your brand so once you are all set with the domain configurations make sure your domains or the sub domains are not on any of the block list so this is the next very important email best practice which requires a constant monitoring from your end so there are over 100 global block list and uh, out of which 30 are highly important and others act as a early warning system so that doesn't mean that others are not important those are uh, early warning systems so while you should be concerned about 30 but you should also keep a track of others too so that is very important because it will be giving you some of the uh, warnings uh, like if your domain is going uh, wrong in some of the listings or if the reputation is going gradually wrong it can give you alert and signals of lot of things which is going to happen wrong so if you are thinking how to monitor so many block list and that to at a regular interval so then don't worry there are tools to do so so you can use grade my email it's a free community tool wherein you can configure all your sending domains and subdomains to keep getting 
the real time updates on any of the listing which is happening so just you have to add your domains or the subdomains and grade my email will do the rest of the job of analyzing all the domains and giving you the real time feed of whenever the reputation is going down or the uh, domain is getting into some block list you will get a real time update on that and uh, everything is free the fourth important email best practice is to align all your domains in your email so this might be a new word align to you so let's see what is this all about so here on the screen you can see a live example of an email from wall street journal so who is using different domains in the email so let me bring my pointer here back yeah so you can see the from domain here is interactive.wsj.com while the dcam signing domain is cmail19.com and the signed domain is wsj.com and if you see the links which is there inside the emails are uh, linking to alerts.cmail19.com so there is a mix of domains which are used in this particular uh, email so it is very important to align all this uh, domains so what you should be doing is you should make sure your from written path and the link track urls align with the sender so don't leave any doubt in the recipient's mind to categorize your email as phishing or spoofed the fifth important email best practice is to redirect all your subdomains to your main business website so make sure there is no test page neither a for not page coming on your subdomain that you are using as a sender in your email this gives more trust both to your recipients and to the recipient mail server too so here you can see uh, an example where the subdomain interactive.wsj.com should be redirected to its primary domain wsj.com so sometimes primary domain is also referred as organizational domain or the main domain also so you should redirect your subdomain to the main domain the sixth important email best practice is to implement spf on all your sending domain so this might be looking like a repeated piece of advice but do you know only 59% of the top 10000 brands globally are fully compliant with spf so here is a glimpse of netcore's upcoming live global email best practice adoption report so it is good it is a report which will tell you what is the adoption of the email best practices across the top brands uh, in the uh, globe so you can see problems like multiple spf entries and too many dns lookups so these are some of the common reasons why the spf is getting failed for many of the top brands globally so even if you have implemented spf that doesn't mean that that spf will pass and you have implemented it rightly it should be error free so having spf doesn't really mean that you are fully compliant it should be error free as i said you can use an spf validator tool like grid my email is also having it a uh, tool uh, to validate the spf you can use that to know potential problems with your spf record not only that grid my email also keeps a track of uh, real time like it it keeps a track of what is happening on your spf if something is going wrong in your spf record or some changes are happening then it will be sending you a real time alert for all those uh, changes also the seventh important email best practice it to make sure you are using secure https link inside your emails so google has in fact multiple times re reiterated its seriousness for https uh, the latest chrome browser also prompts user when they are trying to access any of the uh, non https urls too so you should send a test email today from your current email vendor and see if the links inside the emails are coming as https or not 
So you can also upload your existing email on Grade My Email to do a 360 content analysis, or uh, you can do a 360 link al analysis also, which are there inside your email using Grade My Email. The eighth important email best practice is to de implement DCAM. The primary sending key should align with your mail.from domain and you should add a secondary key from your ESP or the, the hosting or the service provider too. The ninth important email best practice is to start implementing a strict DMARC policy. Remember the word strict DMARC policy. So, uh, while there are multiple modes are there like strict uh, mode, relaxed mode, but uh, the more, best recommendation as per the email best practice is to implement a strict DMARC policy. DMARC is now a prerequisite for BME compliance too. So I will be talking about BME in my following slide. It's a very new uh, email best practice which has started evolving last couple of years back. So I will be talking about those also in the following slide. So, but uh, coming back to the DMARC, be cautious while implementing DMARC because it can also create delivery issues if not implemented right. Here are the best ways to implement DMARC. So you can start at uh, P equal to none. So P is a parameter inside the uh, DMARC. So you should start with P equal to none. So this is, primarily to identify any authentication gaps and you will get some time to resolve those first. Then step up to P equal to quarantine. So this is the next level of implementation which may have some impact on your emails. Uh, but because you have implemented P equal to none first, so you will be in a better position with lesser impact on your emails. Then at the last, consider implementing P equal to reject. So this is the most strictest level of uh, DMARC. So when you are really sure your email is properly authenticated, you should go with P equal to reject mode. So here on the screen, you can see an example of how a fully aligned email header should look like. So you can see all the records are getting passed and the domains are also aligned. So now coming to the next uh, uh, thing that's BIMI. So this is the new email best practice which has started gaining popularity in last two years. So please get your domains ready for BIMI. So BIMI is a new framework that enables you to control what logo you want to show in the recipient's mailbox. So in fact, this month, uh, that's in uh, right now, July 2021, Google actually has, uh, like Google has been doing uh, beta testing for quite long time on BIMI. So now it has came out of the beta testing phase. And finally, they have given BIMI framework an official stamp. So BIMI is now available for all the Gmail users. So now with this, go live, it is expected that BIMI is going to gain more and more popularity in the coming months. So here on the screen, you can see two examples. So the first example, so let me move my pointer here. So in the first example, you can see uh, there is no logo is there for Airbnb. And in the second example, you can see the logo is appearing for PayPal.com. So the first one is not BIMI ready. The second one is BIMI ready. So BIMI ready means uh, they have implemented all the BIMI policies and are following all the guidelines of BIMI. So PayPal logo is coming because they are fully compliant with BIMI currently. So you can check your grade my email uh, BIMI audit report also, which will tell you how to prepare your domain for BIMI. What are the things which are lagging uh, and which need to be fulfilled for uh, converting your domain into a fully compliant BIMI domain. So BIMI requires DMARC at enforcement and a properly formatted SVG image 
under the tiny PS standard. So some domains may also require VMC once they are available for purchase. So right now uh, there are two providers who are giving the VMC uh, certificate. So you can go with uh, those providers. I, I will be sharing the link of those in the uh, tutorial links which I have shared in the description uh, below. So Gmail has make it a mandate to use VMC certificate. So please go and start getting your VMC certificates. So with this, I have completed the 10 email best practice, but now today I have two more bonus best practice for you. So if you are using a dedicated email sending IP address with your vendor, then please set the reverse DNS, which is also called as RDNS pointing to your domain. So if you don't know about these RDNS settings, you can refer to the tutorial links which I have shared in the description below and it will guide you to the right document talking about RDNS and how to really do this setup. Last but not the least, activate Google Post Master. So register your organization domain and all subdomains on Google Postmaster. Uh, Google Postmaster is like a gold mine to help you improve your deliverability. Of course, it's free. So you can start adding all your sending domain. Once the sending domain is having good number of email volumes, it is uh, sending to the outside world. The report will start populating here. So with this, 10 plus 2 bonus practice. I am done with my today's session. Uh, thank you so much for listening uh, to this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment below in the comment section or connect with me on LinkedIn. You can use grade my email. Uh, so as I said, it can give you a complete view of your email activities. You can check the health of your email sending within uh, a fraction of a second and then it will also guide you with the tips on how you can really improve your email deliverability. What are the gaps or the best practices which need to be fixed? So hope this session was helpful. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Bye bye. Take care.